In today's lesson, we're looking at structure and graphs of polynomials. Our essential question is, how can you determine the domain, range, and end behavior of a function? What is domain and range? Domain is all of the inputs of a function. It includes all possible values of x. Range is the output of a function, includes all possible values of y. A couple of things to note. We are used to seeing y is equal to a expression. We need to get used to the idea of, instead of writing y is equal to a function, that we write f of x is equal to a function. f of x basically represents y, and it says that y is a function of x, meaning whatever value I put for x will give me some output of y. Let's take a look at determining domain and range. We're looking at the equation y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. This is a graph of that function, which is a quadratic. Notice that I can put in any value for x, a positive and a negative. There are no limitations there. So since I can put in both positive and negative values for x, my domain is all real numbers, which can be written in interval notation as all possible x values from negative infinity to all possible x values to positive infinity. Looking at the range, range is all of your possible y values. If you look at this graph, you'll notice that this graph doesn't go lower than negative 9, which means my range is all possible values of y that starts at negative 9 and goes up. So my range is values for y, which is greater than or equal to negative 9. Written in interval notation, my lowest value for y is negative 9, and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. End behavior. The end behavior of a function's graph is the behavior of the graph as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. Basically what this means is what is the y values doing for a function as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. For the graph of a polynomial function, the end behavior is determined by the function's degree and the sign of its leading coefficient. Here's the chart for the end behavior. You can determine the end behavior of a polynomial function of degree n from the leading term where a is your coefficient and n is your exponent. Make sure that your function is written in standard form. If my coefficient is positive and my exponent is even, then my graph starts up and ends up. An example of this would be a quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. Notice that my exponent is even, and my a value, which is 1, is a positive a value, so my graph starts up and ends up. If my coefficient is positive and my exponent is odd, then my graph starts down and ends up. An example of a positive coefficient and a odd exponent is a linear function where f of x is equal to x. Here my coefficient is 1 and my exponent is 1. It starts down and moves up. If my coefficient is negative and my exponent is even, then I start down and end down. An example of that would be a quadratic where my a value is negative, so this would be a negative 1 and my exponent value is 2, so it's an even exponent. I start down and end down. And then the last one, if my coefficient is a negative and my exponent is odd, I start up and end down. An example of this would be f of x is equal to negative x, where my coefficient is negative 1 and my exponent is odd, it's an 1, I start up and go down. Here's what the end behaviors look graphically. This is when your exponent is odd and your leading coefficient is positive. The way we would read this is as x approaches negative infinity, then our y value, f of x, approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, our y value approaches positive infinity. This is when our exponent is odd and our leading coefficient is negative. As x approaches negative infinity, 
f of x, which is our y, approaches positive infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. When our leading coefficient is positive and our exponent is even, then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. If our leading coefficient is negative and our exponent is even, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Let's take a look at some examples on determining the end behavior. In our first example, we've got negative 0.5 x to the power of 4 plus 2.5 x squared plus x minus 1. And we want to determine the end behavior of this graph. Before we can figure out what the end behavior is, we need to make sure that the polynomial is written in standard form, starting with your highest exponent and then going all the way down to your constant. This polynomial is written in standard form, so I'm only going to look at the first term over here. Our leading coefficient is negative 0.5, which is negative, and our exponent is 4, which is even. Looking back at our chart, if our leading coefficient is negative and our exponent is even, then we know we have a down, down end behavior, which we can say as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. In problem two, we've got f of x is equal to negative 0.3x cubed plus 1.7x squared minus 4x plus 6. This function is written in standard form, so I'm only going to take the first term to figure out my end behavior. Our leading coefficient is negative 0.3, which is negative, and our exponent is 3, which is odd. So we have an up-down end behavior, which can be represented as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. Odd and even functions. When looking at functions, we can classify them as either odd or even or neither. To do this, we take the function and plug in negative x in for x and simplify. It is an even function if you end up with the same function as you started after you simplify. That means all the signs are the same. It is an odd function if you end up with an exact opposite of what you started, meaning the negatives are positive and our positives are negative. If you don't end up with either one of them, then it is neither even or odd. So let's take a look at our example. We want to determine algebraically whether f of x is even, odd, or neither. Step one, where x goes, replace that with negative x, and then simplify. Negative x squared is basically negative x times negative x, which gives me a positive x squared. So I end up with negative three times x squared plus four, which can be simplified to negative 3x squared plus 4, which is the exact same polynomial as what my original function was, which means that this function is an even function. Second polynomial is f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 4x, where x goes replace that with a negative x and simplify. Negative x to the power of 3 is basically negative x times negative x times negative x. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a negative brings me back to a negative. So this simplifies to 2 times negative x cubed. And then we have negative 4 times negative x. Negative times a negative is a positive, so I end up with positive 4x. Simplify over here to get negative 2x cubed plus 4x. Notice that this 2 is a negative and my original is a positive, and here I have a positive 4 and my original is a negative. The signs on each term has changed to the opposite of what we originally started with, so this is an odd function. Last one, we have f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. Start by replacing x with negative x and simplifying. 
negative x cubed is negative x times negative x times negative x, which gives us negative x cubed, minus 3 times negative x squared, which is negative x times negative x, so it's a positive x squared. Negative 4 times negative x is positive 4x, and then we have our constant positive 4. Simplify to get negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then compare our f of negative x to our f of x. Here we have a positive 2x cubed, here we have a negative 2x cubed, so the sign has changed. Here we have a negative 3x squared, and in our f of negative x we have a negative 3x squared, so the sign has not changed. So in this case, because one of our signs changed but the other didn't, this is a neither, even, or odd. Alright, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.